Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. I've got a new video here and it's gonna save you time. And this is gonna teach you seven new things that you might not know about storyboards in either your iPhone app or your iPhone game. Since I'm making a game right now, I thought I might as well orient this towards your game. So you're working on UI. Right now I've got this game here and I'm going to try and pause the game. I want to create a pause menu. I wanna show it, I wanna test it out, see if it's working, if it's gonna work with my game. Right now, nothing happens. So I still need to connect all that. But what I wanna show you is how we can quickly test this screen, along with some other things that are gonna help you be more productive in Xcode. So let's jump right into number one. The first thing that you're gonna learn with storyboard files, you're gonna open them up. So you're gonna click on your navigation here. You're gonna find main.storyboard, jump right in. Now you can zoom in and out by double clicking the white space. You can double click anywhere to um, zoom in, but you have to click in the white space to zoom out. If I try to double click here, you can see I do not go out. Double click here to go out, double click here to go in. All right, so that's navigation 101. The other thing that's really important is you can right click out in the white space. If you right click in here, you won't see it. So in the white space, again, click off of everything. So left click to click off, then right click, and you'll be able to set your zoom if you really need to zoom out. And if you gotta go out more, you can really go out if you have a ton of views. Now this is really helpful um, when you are working with one file. So as you can see, I have one file and let's pretend that we have a bunch of screens here. How are we gonna get to that? Well, our our next tip, our third tip is gonna be using the trackpad to scroll and we can scroll over and we can find that. So two fingers scrolling, you can go vertically and horizontally on the trackpad. Now, this is a little bit hard, it's hit or miss. You don't know where the view is. If you miss it, eh, you're not gonna find it. All right, so double clicking, we're back out to, I guess 12%. Um, so that's kind of cool. There are some keyboard shortcuts which can save you time as well. I'm not going to go into those. Um, the next thing I want to show you, this is going to be adding UI. So let's jump back to this one. I'm going to use the two-finger scroll on my trackpad. So I do recommend the Magic Trackpad. What my setup is right now is I have a normal wired mouse on my right hand. It's a Logitech mouse. Then I've got the Apple Trackpad on my left hand. So I can zoom in, zoom out, and, and sort of multitask as I'm working on my app designs. So one of the things you're gonna notice is if we zoom out, you try to drag out some labels, they sort of just snap back, there's no warning from Apple. And if we tried to zoom into maybe 50% and uh, we kind of find where we went, there we are, you're gonna notice that you cannot drag things out. So you have to double click to zoom into the view and then you can start throwing on the UI. If we were to run this, we might see some UI on the screen. Again, auto layout's gonna make this a little bit weird, so you're gonna see it exactly where it's positioned. So you're gonna see that button is where the button is and label is actually where label is. So it's gonna be sort of a mirror image. If I do this, the, the horizontal, you're gonna see that they line up this way. And then if we look at the vertical, you'll see they match this way. So you, it's basically a carbon copy of whatever you dragged and dropped in there. All right, so next up, number five is using the document editor to really move around. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these two buttons just by selecting them and pressing delete. This right here, this panel on the left of your window is found with this button or there's the menu option under uh, navigate and then, nope, I lied. It is under editor and you'll see hide document outline or reveal document outline. Super useful. That button down there is gonna open it up. You're gonna want this open when you're working on UI. All right, so the trick here is you need to make sure that you don't click on this. This is useless. Apple, for some reason, made it so that you can click on this and it does absolutely nothing. It doesn't jump to where you wanna go. So if I wanna find my pause screen, I'm gonna double click it and we're gonna jump over to the pause. And if I double click back, we can jump back here. So this is a quick way to navigate between things. You can sort of shorten these up so that it's quicker to just see everything on the screen at once. Now, again, if it is hidden like this, we're not gonna be able to jump around. So we won't be able to jump around, so just make sure you expand it once, double click it, you'll jump right to it. So that's gonna be super useful. We can double click to zoom out. Maybe we wanna bring these back together. So I'm gonna try and use my trackpad to help out. I'm gonna pick this up and it looks like I can't drag uh, my trackpad while I have that. So we're gonna have to slowly bring it back together or we can zoom out a little bit more. Now you can lay these out. There's alignment so that you can sort of position them where you need to go. All right, so, Next up, I've got two more tips. So number six, we're gonna jump into how you can test a screen uh, quickly. So we created this pause screen, but instead of writing any code, why don't we just test if this screen is gonna look good? So let's just drag this starting arrow over, and you're gonna notice that this arrow is movable. So you can drag this to any screen, just drop it, 
run your app again with Command R or the play button up top, and all of a sudden, now you're testing out your new screen. You can test out the new logic that you've created or make sure that it works when you rotate and, and things like that. All right, so that's number six. Now number seven, the last one. When you're working with auto layout, this is super important, or anytime you want to know how your app's gonna look on multiple screens, you need to open up the preview, and that's gonna allow you to see what it's going to look like. So you're gonna click on the Venn diagram icon, or if you're on an older version of Xcode, it's a tuxedo. Once you do that, you're gonna see the preview pops up. Now, for you just getting started, you're not gonna probably see anything, or maybe you see just one device, maybe you just see the iPhone 4, and you can, again, zoom in and out with a double click here, you can rotate to see what it looks like when you rotate. And this is gonna show you how your auto layout is going to work. So as you can see, we've got some issues here and this is gonna really be useful in saving you time. You don't need to plug in all these USB cords to plug in all these devices to test it, to be like, oh, I messed up on this one. All right, so it's gonna be all right there and we can add multiple devices. So this is where it's really powerful. Let's add the, the main ones that we need to target, which are gonna be the iPhone 4, the iPhone 5.5 and the the iPad, so that's a four inch screen, not the iPhone 4, uh, not to be confused. And now we can see how our, our UI is gonna look. Now, if I wanna see that on the screen, I'm just gonna double click up here like I showed you, and we can double click to zoom in on this and adjust our, our zoom levels here. So when you wanna look at what's going on, what's wrong, you can double click to zoom in and double click to zoom back out and sort of just reposition it. All right, I know that was fast, but you just learned seven ways that you can be more effective in Xcode with storyboard files. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of different things that you can do here. And uh, I guess I, there's one more thing I, I quickly glossed over. The breadcrumbs up top is how you get to preview. Since I already had it open, it was just there. You need to make sure that you do that, otherwise you won't see it. Normally it's either on automatic, which will show you code, or it will be on manual, which is whatever you last set it to. All right, so if you like this tip and you learned something, please like the video, share it with your friends. See if your friends know how to do these seven different things in Xcode. And if they don't, they're gonna learn how to save some time. Thanks for watching. Uh, and if you enjoyed this and you're interested in making iPhone games, I have a complete iPhone course. I'm offering a 50% discount for anyone who's signing up from YouTube. So just go ahead, sign up from here. Today, uh, the coupon's gonna expire soon, so just do it before it goes or before too many people sign up. All right, so in the next video, we are going to learn how to quickly prototype your UI and make sure it's working. And we're gonna go a little bit more in depth than we did today.